Hey folks, this is uh, Enforcer with War Thunder Gun. We're today flying the B-17 on the Berlin alternate history map, which means we'll be facing Soviets instead of Germans. And this is kind of a longish mission. And the reason why is because despite the quote-unquote reasoning of some people uh, whose opinions I've read on the War Thunder forum who state that bombers are without merit and uh, that uh, they're a detriment to their teams and their teams lose because of bombers. At the end of this video we'll see why that is or can be false. Total fallacy. Bombers do have their place in War Thunder uh, just as much as any I would suppose any other uh, type of aircraft does. Um, but like any other type of aircraft, uh, you have to know how to drive it. You have to know where to drive it. And you have to think about what you're doing. And there are, there are some, some uh, players that jump into a bomber and just they run pell-mell right into the battle area, right toward the first target, uh, without so much as a thought to whether or not there might be enemy fighters nearby, uh, one or a swarm, uh, no thought to whether or not uh, any friendly players that are going to be able to escort them or help them out when they get into a scrape are going to be nearby, just right toward the first target. And I admit that I've done that myself. Um, if if uh, for no other reason that it was a uh, just a educated guess at uh, at uh, how the flow of battle might have been going and uh, where the enemy might or might not have been and uh, generally I've been able to get in and get out sometimes you can't the bombers do have their place in this game and it's not the bomber it's not the bomber at all it's the it's the way the game is set up or I guess the meta as some people put it. Um, and in my opinion, Gaijin has done a lot of fantastic things with this game. I mean, you look at it, it's a, it's a beautiful game to look at. It's a beautiful game to watch. Um, I think the, uh, the flight models are, have, have come along. Um, is there a bias towards the planes of certain countries? Well, your guess is as good as mine on that, and uh, I think anecdotal evidence is uh, all we're going to have to back up any founded or unfounded accusations. Uh, but uh, they've done a lot of things right with the game. Some of the things wrong that they've done, in my opinion, here we are coming up to the first, uh, first target, is that the battles last, you know, a predetermined time until the battle's going to be over. And, you know, whether whether it's ticket bleed or, uh, you know, something, the, the, they, they last, they don't last indefinitely. Uh, and the, the battles need to be persistent. The maps need to be much larger to go along with the battles being persistent. And the reason for that is that they really, ideally, they would have more bases from which planes like this, you know, find B-17 and the B-24s and the B-29s could take off from. And that way they would not get an air start, which, you know, I like driving bombers, but I'm not even sure that that's the fairest thing in the world <laughs> to give them an air start. And, you know, I'm, I'm at 7,000 feet to start out the game, and I'm going to go ahead and climb up to, uh, you know, 14 or 16, maybe more, 1,000 feet, so that I can go bomb my target. So is the air start fair? Well, not totally, you know. But the map is smaller, so I have a feeling that's probably why Gaijin, you know, chose to do that. Uh, but I don't really think it's right. I think the maps need to be larger. 
and or there need to be more rearward bases from which you could take off a bomber or several bombers. Obviously, the bomber itself is no longer the terror wagon that it used to be. Uh, uh, say back in the uh, days, you know, of like 1.37 or before that. Um, and as I understand it, they were they were pretty much gunships, and they seem that way. Of course, if you park yourself off the off of the butt of a B-17 or or a B-25 or really any bomber, you're going to get your nose filled with lead, and that's just how it's going to happen. You've got to be smart about the way you approach a bomber. And so you can do it so you're not going to get killed. Well, they fixed that, kind of, uh, or wrecked it, one of, depending on how you look at it. Um, but... Um, you know, even the bombers themselves and how they're handled in game can be changed. Uh, I don't want to sound like a used to be or I was, but uh, I've been playing flight sim games off and online for well since 1994, and uh, uh, the first, the very first game I picked up was Kesmai's Air Warrior, and. I've had the I've had the same handle since then, and um, you know, in, in Air Warrior, we had A twenty sixes and we had B seventeens, and not only could you fly them, not only could you drop bombs with them, but you could also crew them. <laughs> So, if you were crazy enough, you know, you could crew up a B-17 and fill up every one of the gun positions and take the plane aloft and go to drop your bombs and have a good time running and gunning. I mean, just, uh, you know, all the, all the players, uh, all the players that were on your plane you know, had a gun and, and, you know, were capable of shooting down enemy aircraft. And that's what happened. And it was fun. So why doesn't Gaijin investigate doing that? Why don't they, why don't they do that? And I've suggested it on the boards. You know, why don't the developers try that? Because it would be a lot of fun. And it wouldn't be any different than, you know, the, I, I, think, I think it's already, I think a lot of things are already set up to do it. Because you can, you can get into chat, and you can see where you can see where friends are that have that have come on uh, and are and are playing the game. Um, you know, you can invite them to join a squadron, uh, and uh, you can all squad up together. What would be the difference between doing that and crewing a bomber, crewing a B twenty five, crewing a B seventeen? or any of the German or Japanese uh, or Russian bombers. What would be the difference? So this is something that Gaijin needs to improve to make the game more fun and um, add a little bit more realism to it. And, you know, continue the practice of, well, the gunner can be the gunner can be disabled, or the gunner can be killed, or um, you know, the gunner still has a limited amount of time, or some amount of time to have to reload. You know, continue those things, but just you know, allow the crewing of all the gun positions by real human gunners instead of the uh, AI gunners. I think that'd be a I think that'd be a great success for anybody who uh, wanted to do that. And if you couldn't find a crew, well, then you still have the robo gunners back there. Um, The other thing, uh, the other thing I think honestly that Gaijin needs to change in the game is um, base capture. You know, now right now with uh, in realistic, and I'm solely talking about realistic um, base capture in realistic. You uh, is done 
by your ground forces uh, when they get close enough, or um, um, if it's a if it's an island battle, then it's going to be with troop transports, you know. Um, but either way, it's it could be a little more fun. It could be a little more engaging. Um, and one of the ways to do that is to use a transport plane, you know, a C-47, for instance. And C-47, fill it up with paratroopers and set a number of paratroopers that would be necessary to take a particular size base, fly the paratroopers to the base, drop them over the base, you know, not so high that it's going to take forever or that they can be shot, but not so low that they end up not getting their chutes open and bouncing. And then the paratroopers take the base. Once the paratroopers have taken the base, then you own the base. And it can be retaken. So the other side can do the same thing. They can fill a transport up with paratroopers and if their transport makes it to the base they can retake the base but again the battle has to be persistent it can't be a, a fixed finite amount of time kind of like we have now and you can have some real slug outs over, over, over things like that It's just something to make the game a little more fun. Now, I've suggested this in the forums, and people were, there were some that were, oh, that sounds pretty fun. There were some that were very quick to, you know, say that, well, nobody's going to fly a transport because it doesn't have guns and it can't defend itself, and it, it'll get shot down. Well, you know, that happens with bombers anyway, and the troop transports can be escorted. And I think that would be a, I think that'd be a, you know, a fun way to, a fun way to go about it. Because, well, let's face it, you know and I know that bombers and troop transports too would just be, you know, drawing fighters to, to them, enemy fighters. It'd be a source of, uh, it would be a source of, uh, air victories for whoever decided to uh, escort them. I don't think it would be a bad, I don't think it would be a bad idea, and it would certainly uh, expose a new dimension to the game. You know, so I think that, I th really, really think they ought to examine it. Um, they could knit some of these maps together, possibly, and make larger maps, more rear area airfields, Make it so that you could select the airfields that you were taking off from instead of just one main airfield where the enemy knows you're going to be. Wouldn't that make more sense to have, to have a uh, larger variety of airfields? And if you're flying with a squadron or if you're flying with a, uh, you know, an element of guys that uh, you, know, um, you just want to fly with, your friends with and you just want to fly with, you can all... You know, they could set it up to where, well, they, and they like just as they have it now, where you can, you can, you can chat amongst yourselves and decide from which field you want to take off. But they do need more fields, because I think it's ridiculous that there's only two to three fields that you're gonna one to one to one to two fields. I'm sorry, that you're gonna be able to take off or land from at the beginning of the game or later in the game. You know, well, gee, the enemy knows where you're going to be. Now, with more fields available for takeoff and landing, would there be enemies who would be vultures at, at other fields too? Yeah, that's going to happen. But it'll be a lot harder for them to figure out where enemy players are taking off from. And so it's not as likely if you have more 
dispersed airfields in the game. I think that's something that Gaijin needs to really, really take a look at. And they could do it. They could do it. I mean, you can take a look at this game and you can see that that the uh, Gaijin, that the War Thunder uh, developers uh, certainly have the uh, certainly have the talent to um, pull a more expanded game such as this out of their hats. Um, they're doing a they're doing a really good job with this now. You know, there's some warts uh, to be sure, but they're doing a good job getting uh, getting things sorted out. I think you know. You have to give them their due. I mean, there's, there's, there are there are other flight sims that are that are out there. Um, you know, Warbirds uh, still exists. Certainly, Ace is high. Um, there's another uh, simulation game that uh, is modeled with a great deal of fidelity um, in both graphics and flight modeling. Um, and this one is a nice, I think, in between uh, War Thunder. Is uh, is definitely better than uh, uh, I think Warbirds, definitely Warbirds or Aces High. Um, those games I think are whoopsie. I cut I cut power before the threshold of the runway, and I was too high. Otherwise, that would have been a good landing. Uh, Warbirds, uh, the graphics. Uh, take a backseat to uh, flight model fidelity I think because they've they've worked on those flight models ever since the late 1990s mid 1990s and uh, same with aces high and some of the aces high crew are are people from air warrior actually um So they've been tuning those flight models, and 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 while graphically it's it's somewhat better than Warbirds, both of both of which were better than Air Warrior, um, but they were all prod they were all products of their time. Um, I think Sims like this one, like More Thunder, uh, show us just what can be done graphically and also what can be done as far as the fidelity of the flight models so we have those but we, we, the, it's the playability of the game actually and I don't think a, having I don't believe that having a persistent battle would would in any way you know harm the Harm the structure of the game. You can still have you can still have rankings. You can still have point standings. Um, it's just the matter in which you do it. Now I've flown out here from my base. After being repaired, I'm going to get attacked. Right here. There goes the rudder, and he's done a he's done a really good job too. He he didn't come in. Um, he didn't come in from uh, dead astern, you know. It was a, it was a, it was an attack from. Uh, and my gunner, well, that's not my gunners, that's me. If any of you have been shot down by any bomber that I'm flying, nine times out of ten, I'm shooting you down, and not my gunners. The thing I can't figure out, though, is after I set him on fire, um, he runs. He doesn't stop to finish me off. So I thought I would, I thought I would take a look at it from, from his vantage point just to see if there was any reason why. Now, as you can see, he's, he sets up on me pretty good here. He's not going to come right in on my tail. And if he makes a good pass, he's going to damage me and be able to get away. And indeed he does. I mean, he he uh, creates a lot of holes in my, uh, in my port wing. And 
he also takes my rudder out. So, but I mean, I can still maneuver. I can still shoot, obviously, and I set him on fire. And I put some more holes in him. And so, he's leaking. He's either leaking oil or coolant, one of the two now. So, um, maybe it was imperative that he got back to his base, and, and indeed he did. He, uh, he uh, flew towards his base anyway. I couldn't really see what ended up with him, though, because of the replay system, which is a little crazy, because after you watch an opposing player's replay for a while, they turn into a puff of smoke, the plane doesn't move. <laughs> you can tilt, you can pan, but the plane's not moving. It's it's kind of ridiculous. Um, and there he is. He's, he's, he's flown quite a ways off, and right now I'm just... Um, I'm just hitting... Uh, targets of opportunity. I'm hitting uh, um, pillboxes at this point. Someone suggested that I go for the airfield, but I didn't want to get close to that guy again. I wasn't going to, you know, tempt fate, you know, twice. He had already had a shot at me and he didn't get me, so why should I give him another one? By this point in the game... I am, as you can see, over on the uh, left, I am the last player. And the Russian, the Russian plane, the Yak-3, that uh, just tried to shoot me down, he was the last of his, uh, last of his uh, team also. I don't know why he didn't barrel, do a barrel roll and come back down and get me because he probably had time to do it before his engine quit on him, but he wanted to probably want to get back to base. That's the only thing I could think to repair and uh, rearm. Um, but I'm the last player on our team, and it wasn't because I went to the edge of the map and I hid. It was because I flew the mission smartly, and I didn't allow myself to get dragged toward the main battle. And also, there was a whole lot of luck involved. Let's not let's not uh, gloss over that. There was a whole bunch of luck involved, which almost ran out at the hands of the enemy player. But to those who say that the bombers are the bombers do nothing but become a detriment to the team, they drag the team down. You know, to those who uh, say. Well, I'll bail from a game if I even see a bomber, uh, you know, in the lineup. Well, you know, you're wrong. You know, some players need to grow up a little bit, you know. If they, if they, if, if a bomber's in the game, why don't you help it succeed? You know, just fly with the bomber. Uh, one or two players, you know, you're going to rake. You're gonna get you're gonna get kills because enemy planes will be attracted to bombers. And can the bombers win a game? Oh, you bet they can. You bet they can. There were a couple of B other B-25s in this game, and uh, you know if they could have knocked out uh, one base each. And survived a little bit longer we could have done it you know all on that now let's take a look at, at these statistics which are gonna pop up for oh there they are well looks like I'm the last man standing and I'm gonna deliver the final blow putting the lie to bombers drag the team down and are worthless well, I've gotten my little rant out, and I appreciate you listening and flying along with me. This is Enforcer, and as always, thanks for watching.